Families by Faith. I believe one of the most exciting programs that we've had, uh, at least in my ministry in these last years. Exciting because faith is something exciting from the Word of God. The Bible says faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. The Bible also declares that without faith it is impossible to please Him. And it goes on to say, for we must believe that He is and that He is rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Families by faith, Perhaps you've heard of the program, Faith Promise. Oh, many, many are involved in this program of missions. How that God in His uh, uh, wisdom is able to work out the details to give you that extra little bit of money as you're uh, praying and asking God by faith to give you something, and then by faith you receive it because you have promised to give it away. Well, Families by Faith is a program very similar to Faith Promise in that we're going to ask God now for a family, a family that God himself will place in our pathway, a family that we're going to get into the membership of our church or your church. Now, in this program, a number of things are going to take place. We're going to ask you before the program is over to make a covenant with the Lord. In fact, we have a small covenant card, and when we give the uh, opportunity, we're going to ask you to come and and, uh, sign a card, uh, make a covenant with the Lord, uh, pray and ask God by faith to place a family in the pathway of your family, a family that you will get into the membership of your church. We have also for each one involved a little brochure. This brochure is going to uh, give you some more additional information. On the inside, there's a place where you'll begin to record names uh, of families as they cross your pathway. Families that soon, or at least some of them, will be coming into the membership of the church. And then we have another insert for your Bible. Now, you should carry your Bible. Inside the Bible, you can have this card, a place where you can put uh, the names uh, uh, as families cross your pathway. Now, families by faith, how is it going to work? We're going to give you a series of four lectures. We're going to tell you now how the program began, and then one by one lay out the different steps that are going to make it work. Families by Faith, how did it start? Well, many years ago, I was pastoring in Fresno, California. Dr. Jim Combs was pastoring the Olivet Baptist Church of Linwood, California. He had become ill, and for a number of months, because of his illness, he was not able to function completely as the pastor should, making all the visits and doing everything that a pastor wants to do. But because of his illness, uh, he had not been able to fulfill those duties. One day he felt led of the Lord to call me. Little did he realize I'd already been praying about moving to that Los Angeles area, an area where there are 12 million people in a 125-mile radius of that Olivet Baptist Church. And he called me with this uh, thought in mind. Uh, He said, I've led our people to call you to become co-pastor with me in the Olivet Baptist Church. Now, Dr. Combs and I have been very dear friends since our seminary days in the late 40s. And uh, I felt it was God's will. And so I made the move. I became co-pastor of the church with Dr. Combs. And then for those first months, uh, he spent the time recuperating. And I took that opportunity to acquaint myself with the church and to begin a program to enlarge the attendance, to get the attendance back up, for it had dropped somewhat. Oh, many days in this home we would discuss, what can we do? What can we do to make the church grow? Oh, we must do something for the church had declined somewhat, and now we needed something to give it that spur to get it started back up again. What can we do? Well, we talked about different programs. We investigated programs of others the other churches had used, but it seemed that none of them really uh, would fit what we needed. And so finally we came to the conclusion, let's build our own. How will we do it? Well, our first thought was, let's find some families in our church And uh, with these families, let's convince them uh, that together, if each family would add a family to the church uh, over a certain period of time, very soon we'd see that increase. And so uh, we finally devised the program where we would seek 50 families in our church. 
and Dr. Combs being uh, a preacher of, of great intellect and uh, liking to preach by uh, acrostics, uh, uh, put the name to our first program. He called it the 50 Fine Faithful Fruitful Family Program. We did select 50 families. We prayed about it. We preached, and, and these families uh, uh, felt led of the Lord to go ahead and make this uh, uh, commitment to the Lord. And in this first program, it was quite severe. We said, now, we want you to promise God that you're going to add a family. No, not asking God for a family by faith, but we're going to ask you to promise God that you, without fail, are going to uh, add a family to the church in the next 90 days. You see, in most programs, we put the burden upon a single individual. But in this program, we decided, no, we'll not make anyone feel that uh, we've selected them as an individual. Let's make it a family program. For there are four people in the average family, that means maybe the husband, maybe the wife, maybe one of the children would be responsible, be used of God to get that family. That way a family could become involved, even if the whole family was not a member of the church, or if perhaps the husband felt he couldn't do it. He might feel the wife can. And so with this program, it was a program for the family. I had to do the preparation work and the preaching to prepare the church, and finally the, the day came. We gave that invitation, uh, and we had our 50 families come to the altar and kneel and there make that covenant unto the Lord. In this covenant, uh, they prayed as a family, by faith we're going to ask you for, by faith we're going to trust you, to speaking of God, to place a family in our pathway. See, they're asking God to do something for them. Place a family in their pathway. And we did that. My, how God began to bless. You see, they had asked God to do something for them. God's concerned about families, concerned about that church enlargement. And so very, very soon we began to see the results. Families began to come. In fact, within that 90-day period, we'd had over 50 families join our church, over 200 additions to the church. Oh, that was all we needed. It started things back up. And all that great Olivet Baptist Church, how it grew into such a powerhouse for the Lord. But there was the turning point families by faith, but in that case, the 50 Fine Faithful Fruitful Family Program. The years passed. I began to preach in evangelism. I began to put this into churches. I remember a church in Florida, Brother Melvin Connors, a man who had surrendered to preach under my ministry way back in the early 50s, over 30 years ago. He had called me to help him in a revival, and I decided I'd put the program in the revival. I think we had 36 families that made that uh, promise unto the Lord, that covenant, that they would ask God to place that family in their pathway. Six weeks later, he called me and told me that already each one had a family, that had that number of families. Oh, of course, not every family will get a family, but some will get two and some will get three. I remember on one occasion, I landed in Alton, Illinois. We put the program in a church in Godfrey. I'd landed at the airport uh, just to visit with the pastor to have lunch with him while returning to the West Coast. And uh, he uh, persuaded me to go out to the church. And while in the church, one of his members came in, and he was a businessman in that church. And, oh, when I saw him, and he saw me, his eyes just lit up. Oh, there was such a glow there. And he said, Pastor, guess what? For the program had only been in six weeks. And he said, God has given our family ten families that have united with our church. Ten families because of this one businessman. Of course, he did work in the bus ministry of the church, and that gave him a little extra opportunity. But here were ten families in six weeks that had joined, again, a church because of just one family. But that one family had made that covenant with the Lord. Since then, uh, we've put the program in many, many churches, uh, in revival meetings. We've uh, uh, instituted the program, installed it in the church, and we've had it work time and time again. Uh, in this particular church where we're speaking right now, we've had the program in, and God has blessed it. Families have been added to the church. And I'm persuaded that in any church, if you'll put the program in, uh, put the basics that we'll give you in the different passages and the different messages, that you too can see a numerical growth in your church. Now, this is not a Sunday school program. 
It's not a program to build up attendance for any certain Sunday or campaign. This is a program to add members to the church. Now, the family, as you make that covenant, we're not going to ask you to uh, go out maybe and win that family. You might not know how to win a person to Christ, but you can be a part of the process. How are you going to do that? Well, in the series of four messages that we're going to bring, you'll find that God can use you. Sometimes you'll not say a word, but God will use you to start the process that's going to bring that family into the church. Well, how does it all work? Our first lecture is going to be about God's divine providence. Divine providence. What is divine providence? Do you believe in divine providence? Oh, basically it's this, uh, God able to work out the details. You see, nothing's going to happen by accident. You're going to ask God for a family, to place a family in the pathway of your family. God knows where all the families are. He knows the family that's down the block. He knows the family that's uh, across town. He knows all the families, uh, and uh, he knows the one that's right now concerned, the one that has a heavy heart, one that's talking about maybe joining a church somewhere, maybe uh, uh, right now thinking that they ought to make peace with God. So God knows where they are. Is it difficult then for God and his divine providence to work out the details where you will have a family cross your pathway? You see, this is the program. By faith, you're going to ask God to place that family in your pathway. Now, divine providence. How does it work? Let's look into the Bible. Each of the lectures, we're going to look into the Bible, into the Word of God, and you'll see everything that we're talking to you about, every bit of it, is in the Word. Now, let me read to you a few scriptures found in the book of John, chapter number 4, and beginning in verse number 4. Listen to these words. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied of, uh, with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Now, here's a story of two people who have their paths crossed, the Lord on the one side and the woman on the well at the other. Now, let's look at divine providence in this. In the fourth verse, it said, and he must needs go through Samaria. What does that mean? Well, it means that uh, there was a purpose. He knew all about it. He knew that at a certain time, at a certain place, a woman was going to come to draw water. Now, all he had to do is arrange all the circumstances so he might be there at the appropriate time. And that's what, exactly what he did. And that's how the program is going to work with you. God knows where the family is. You're asking for a family. Now God is going to work out the details to place that family in your pathway. That is, each one of you that have made the covenant. Well, the Bible says he must needs go through Samaria. Then he comes to the city, the city near, uh, uh, called Sychar in Samaria, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Uh, and uh, Jacob's well was there. The Bible said the Lord was weary. Well, that's normal, isn't it? How's it all going to happen? Well, in the course of events, you see, nobody else knew about this, only the Lord. The disciples were there. The journey was long. Now he's on the side of the well. But the disciples are there. What's he going to do? He's going to have to send them away. Oh, you perhaps heard somebody say, where were the disciples? They should have been soul winning, but they were in trying to get something to eat. No, I'm persuaded the Lord sent them away. For you see, a woman is going to come by with a problem. Not a problem the public should know, but God knows. He knows everything. In his divine providence, he's working out the program. Now, here the woman is going to come to him and say, you know, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan and you've asked me for water? That's so strange. Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans, but the Lord knows all about it. 
He has to be there alone. Well, the time comes. The woman is there with the water pot. What's she going to say? She has a water pot. That's a good way to start a conversation. How about a drink of water? You see, when the family crosses your pathway, the circumstances will dictate what you're going to say. Something will happen, and God will help you to have just the right thing to say. Well, it happened here, and uh, he told her about this living water. Oh, if you knew who it is that's talking to you, that's what he said. You see, he's concerned about families, concerned about people, their soul, uh, their being saved, born again, all of that. He knows uh, the details. He works out the details. And in this program of Families by Faith, God, is, in His divine providence, is going to work out all of the details. Now, let me illustrate how it's going to work. Divine providence in its working. I landed in the city of Pontiac, Michigan. We were getting ready to put the program in the Emanuel Baptist Church where Dr. Tom Malone is pastor. And uh, the plane that I was flying was giving me some problems. It was a single engine, Cessna uh, 210 Centurion. And it was beginning to leak oil out of the prop shaft. And so uh, as soon as I landed, I called Dr. Malone who is a pilot, an excellent pilot, in fact, uh, holds about every ticket you can get, instructor, pilot, the whole works. And I called him and I says, now, Dr. Tom, I've just landed and I have a problem with my plane. Uh, who's your mechanic? Who is it that you use? And he said, well, uh, if you'll look across the runway, for I'd landed at the Oakland Pontiac Airport, says you'll see a big red hanger and it'll say Bob Martin across the top, or Martin Aviation across the front. You just taxi over there and ask for Bob Martin, and he's my mechanic, and he'll uh, do a good job. But he said, I want to warn you, you're not going to like him. He's, uh, he's a Catholic, and, uh, but he's not a good one. He's a bad one. <laughs> he said uh, he, his language is terrible. It just curses terribly and said uh, you'll feel uncomfortable around him, but he is a good mechanic, and we've tried to win him, but uh, we've not had any success. But you just go over there and ask for him, and he'll do a good job for you. So I taxied the plane over to the hangar. And uh, I met Bob Martin and told him my problem. He looked at the aircraft and he said, yes, uh, it'll cost you about $8 for uh, the seal for the prop shaft and cost about $25 to put it in. And, and that sounded reasonable to me, so all right, fine, go ahead and do it. Now, what I'm trying to illustrate is divine providence. Normally, I would not have been there. I would have parked the aircraft uh, over in the visitor's area. But now, because of a problem, I'm on the other side of the airport at a certain hangar, and I've met a certain man. Why? God in his divine providence is going to work out the details. Well, I met Bob Martin, and, and uh, he agreed to fix the plane. The next day, I went back out to see about my plane. Now, those of us that fly, we have sort of a peculiar love for our aircraft, and we always take care of that aircraft. Well, it's our life, you know. So I went out, and I met Bob Martin. Little did I realize that he was in trouble financially and was right on the verge of bankruptcy. And every time a plane would come in, he'd get out a big magnifying glass and boy, he would look it over and find out everything that was wrong in order to get more and more money out of every job. He met me and he said, now preacher, he said, I hate to tell you this, but I've had to ground your airplane. It is unsafe to fly. Oh my goodness. Why did that have to happen to me? Have you ever had that happen to you? Something you wonder, why did that have to happen to me? Well, maybe it's because God is just getting ready to place somebody in your pathway. Somebody you've never known before, but somebody whose life can be changed. All right, Bob, what is it? He said, well, I found both of your wheels have cracks in them and are going to have to be replaced. Oh, my goodness, how much is it going to cost me? Oh, he said, I already have it all figured out. It'll be $250. Oh, I didn't even have a car at that time. That was my way of getting around. What would I do? Only thing I could do, I had to have it repaired. Just ask the Lord to help some way. So I said, well, all right, go ahead and fix it. I knew that uh, time was coming uh, for me to talk to him. Uh, I've been in this in the ministry for many, many years now, more than 35 years preaching the gospel, and I knew there was a reason, and that Bob probably would be the reason the Lord wanted me to talk to him, and so I decided, well, now's the time, and I went to the hangar, 
uh, went in the little hallway they had leading to the main part of the hangar. As I entered the, the hallway, he was coming in from the hangar from the other end. I saw him. I said, Bob, I said, uh, uh, I, when you get a little spare time, I'd like to talk to you uh, uh, a little bit about the Lord. Oh, he became angry. And he says, get off my back. He said, I'm sick and tired of you people trying to talk to me and to change my religion. And he used some words that I couldn't possibly give to you on this television program. And, and it wasn't too kind at all. And, and I'll tell you what, uh, uh, people that talk to me like that are not going to work on my airplane. And, and I just walked up to him and just grabbed him by his shop coat uh, just to let him know I meant business. And I said, sir, I said, if I can't talk to you about the Lord, you cannot work on my airplane. And I turned loose of him, and I turned around, and I walked out of the building. Well, he was shocked, and, and he needed the job, and he was embarrassed because of what had happened, and he knew he had uh, said something he shouldn't have said in the way he shouldn't have said it to a preacher. And he followed me out, apologizing. And I told Bob Martin, I said, Sir, I said, you grounded my airplane because that's the law. You found something wrong with it. And I respect you for it. I wouldn't want to fly a plane that's safe and or unsafe, and, and uh, you grounded it. Well, I appreciate that, uh, though uh, it's going to cost me money. But I said, I have a job to do also. And my job is, I need to witness to everyone uh, that crosses my pathway. And uh, certainly, you've crossed my pathway, and I'd like to talk to you just a little bit uh, about the Lord. And I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you'll let me, I promise you, I'll not speak to you over 20 minutes. I just want 20 minutes of your time. And I promise you, I'll not try to change your religion. For you see, friends, we're not in the business to change people's religion. We're in the business to win people to Christ. And uh, we hope that most people are saved in other religions, but there are always some that are not. Well, here was a case. Uh, Bob Martin, uh, uh, he was a Catholic, but he wasn't a good one. He was a bad one. Well, uh, going to, uh, I promised him, I'll not try to change your religion if you'll just give me 20 minutes. He said, all right, under those circumstances, no more than 20 minutes and just one time. And I said, all right, that's agreeable. And so we went back into the hangar. I uh, uh, went into the office and uh, I'd hardly uh, been able to settle myself into the office to do a little studying when the door opened and Bob came in and he came up to me and he looked at his wristwatch and he said, all right, let's go ahead and get it over with. <laughs> Well, get it over with. And he looked at his watch. We went inside the inner office that he had where nobody was around. I took the Word of God, and I went through the plan of salvation with him, uh, showed him a, a new life and a new beginning, and, you know, the Spirit of the Lord was there, and, and uh, Bob Martin needed something, and he'd never been approached quite like this. I suppose it took about ten minutes, and we were down on our knees beside a little coffee table in that office of his, and there Bob Martin accepted Christ as his own personal Savior. Now, what am I trying to say? Divine providence. God knew the time was right and all the circumstances had the right person there with the right approach at this particular time for this particular man. And friend, he's going to do the same thing with you. You make a covenant, you ask God, then you're going to have that happen unto you the same way. God will work out the details. Well, he got up off his feet and uh, looked at me and said, Now, you're not going to change my religion. I said, That's right, Bob. I promise that. I'm not going to talk to you about changing religion. Okay, he says, I'll tell you what. He said, I want you to talk to my wife then because she sure needs it. Well, she needed it all right because she was under the uh, influence of a psychiatrist and he had her on all sorts of dope. Uh, the year preceding Bob Martin, I think it paid out $16,000 uh, on medical bills because of her. Uh, she had had to be in a mental hospital for a short while. Uh, things were not going well. Financially, things were not going well. Uh, with her, things were just going from bad to worse. To make the long story short, he brought her down. It didn't take long, about 10 minutes. She was on her knees asking God to save her, and God saved her. Oh, what a wonderful, glorious salvation. And oh, what a lovely family today. Often when I'm in the area, I visit with them, have a meal with them. And today, Bob Martin, oh, no longer with a hangar, no longer in the airplane business, 
has a greenhouse uh, a business worth over a million dollars. You know, you get things straightened out with God, things are going to change. And not only that, struck oil on this land, a lot of things happening to this particular fellow. But you see, divine providence brought it all together. What is divine providence? Well, the Bible says he must needs go through Samaria. Why? At a certain time, a woman is going to come by a certain place. So he has to be there so their paths will cross. How's it going to happen with you? Well, God and his divine providence is going to work out the details so that at a certain time, this family is going to cross your pathway. And not just this family. I'm persuaded there will be many families. Uh, I know of one family that God used to bring 13 families into the church in a six-month period. Families by faith, would you be willing to make a covenant with the Lord? Saying, Lord, by faith we want to ask you for, by faith we want to trust you to place in the pathway of our family a family that we will get into the membership of our church. Now, I've made some promises to Bob Martin. I left. Six months later, I was back again lecturing at the Midwestern Baptist College there in the city of Pontiac. I landed. I bet I met Bob Martin. Now, before I'd left, uh, I told him, I said, now, when you go to your church, I want you to get your Bible. Now, he had a Catholic Bible, a due version of the Bible. I said, I want you to get your Bible, and when you go to your church, and when your priest gets up to preach, I want you to check your Bible and uh, uh, just make sure he's preaching the Word. Well, six months later, I came back to lecture at the college. I met Bob Martin, and he told me this. He said, preacher, he said, I've been doing what you told me to do. And uh, he said, oh, he said, now, he hasn't been using the Bible, but I've got, I started reading it, and he said, I've read almost the entire Bible. And he said, this is the most exciting book I've ever read. Well, that was an encouragement, wasn't it? He's getting into the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now he's reading from the Bible. Well, I left. I came back again six months later. And uh, this time to put another program in the church, the Emmanuel Baptist Church for Dr. Malone. And uh, I met Bob Martin again at the airport. Here's what he said, first thing. He said, uh, Preacher, guess what? He said, we had over 5,000 in Sunday school last Sunday. 5,000 in Sunday school? Now, we know that uh, in the Catholic Church, they don't have Sunday school. Something was wrong here. And he saw immediately I was puzzled. He said, oh, down at Dr. Malone's church, the Emmanuel Baptist Church, had a big program called the Feeding of the 5,000. And he said, my wife and I went. And he said, they had over 5,000 people that Sunday. He said, he baptized over 400. And guess what? My wife and I were two of them. You see, we don't have to change people. God changes people. Oh, what an exciting thing it was. Next time I came back, six months later, Bob met me at the plane, and he said, Now, preacher, I've already okayed it with Dr. Malone. He says he doesn't need you for a while, and I've got some people I want you to talk to. Just landed and already a visitation program. I said, Well, Bob, you know I don't have transportation. You'll have to give me some wheels of some sort. Oh, he said, You don't have to go anywhere. He said, I've already got them scheduled to come here. They'll be here every 30 minutes. And that's what happened. You know, before it was over, 37 people had found Christ at that uh, hangar, just at the hangar, because of Bob Martin. How did it happen? Well, families by faith, divine providence, the first message, the first, the foundation, divine providence, God worked out all the details. And friend, God's going to work out the details for you as you become involved in families by faith. May God bless you as you become involved.